Yes. That, all right. That, if you notice about some of the things that happen in our country, that, you saw the guy in Alaska with the Grizzlies. Remember a couple of years ago, he lived with the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies were being buddies and everything. Had his camera rolling when the Grizzlies were attacking him and his girlfriend. They ate them both on camera. That was, you know, that was his thing. I, 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 it may sound like this is a, you couldn't create this kind of a picture, a motion picture, this whole situation. Uh, I can see this happening. I can see him getting out of prison. I think his wife might have left. I don't know that. I'm just telling you hearsay right now. I can see all this building up on him. All of a sudden, the pressures of getting out of prison, all these animals not being cared for. Him saying, I'm letting them all go. I'm going to cut all the wires, get them all out of here, let them go free, and then we'll take them life. I can see that happen. Uh, I really, from knowing kind of what I know about the animal world, the guy just was depressed. And he loved the animals that much, probably. That's why I think right now we're uh, in the process that we saw some of the stuff that those are going to not share. Uh, we decided maybe to, to bury the animals up there on the property. So, you know, somebody said, what are we going to do with them? I, I, I know you're all in the media, so am I, right? But the last thing I want anybody to see is uh, what, what had to happen here. There's no use for people to see that. What happened, happened. It's over now. It's not quite over. But hopefully we can get some of these animals from the Columbus Zoo in the wild and take care of them. We have, we have calls from all over the country right now wanting to place these animals. All of the United States are calling. But that's not the problem. And maybe, you know, the wife is coming back that we can sit down with him and discuss all this. Uh, but right now we have a serious situation on our hands. Going wild animals like I do with my staff. We have to do everything we can, the sheriff said, to try to locate these animals. We don't have correct numbers, but we know there's some out there. And that's all we can do. Jack, is there any time where these animals are caged, they become domesticated, or no. wild animals that are in a cage? You know, some people, the other David Williams said it very well, the famous trainer with the Ringing Brothers Circus. You can usually train a wild animal, you can never tame a wild animal. And that's kind of something you go by. And I say that because uh, I had a serious accident happen to me every one in 1972. I don't share this, I shared with a couple of you this morning. Where I had African lions, I raised lions and tigers for zoos throughout uh, Tennessee and other places back in 1972. I had a three year old daughter and a two year old or one year old daughter. And I had a friend come out with her three year old son. I don't know what happened, I wasn't there. They crossed two fences, the young boy put his arm through the cage, the lion took the arm off of the shoulder. I had to go and pick up that little arm, and it was only pulled off on the chain link. The power of these animals is tremendous. I've seen a tiger take down a 2,000 pound water buffalo in less than 10 seconds. Now these are wild tigers, right? These aren't captive wild tigers. Your answer to your question is, yes, are we dealing with a different animal? Sure we are. They're, they're in a captive environment all their lives. That doesn't mean they're not dangerous. Uh, and that's why the sheriff is doing everything he can right now. We can locate these animals as quickly as possible before before, you know, they're going to start searching for food or whatever it might be. What animals are still alive to possibly transfer to the Well, right now we have some leopards going to Tom. and works me over here just up there. There's some leopards, I think, some primates. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to give you a better list at our next conference. Uh, I, I can tell you we had some primates that were inside the house. Uh, I'm not sure monkeys, chimpanzees, I, I'm not sure what, what breed they are. Uh, they were they were still secured. Uh, they're, they, you know, they were secured inside the house. So, uh, and then we have uh, some other cat species that that we'll be able to release to the zoo at this point. Yes. Sir. I don't know that we have anything of that of that nature yet, Chuck. Um, you know, all we have is the preliminary investigation of what we've seen and what we're interpreting happened. And uh, we're, we're still doing the investigation as we speak. No, we, we have not found uh, any kind of suicide note at this point. We are still, you know, uh, obviously, as I said before, we are still not in a 100% completely secure area up there. So uh, we are still searching the scene, looking for everything that's there, evaluating it. Um, and, and again, there, there was no calls to our agency that I'm aware of. Uh, and, um, you know, as I said, all, all preliminary results is what is what we discussed. I, I have no idea. I wouldn't want to speculate. Um, I haven't talked to the coroner yet. As far as uh, the the detectives on the scene last night spoke to him, uh, I'm not exactly sure of what the injuries are. Uh, I would like to wait to answer that question until we hear back from the uh, the autopsy report. Um, I, I'll say yes, but I'm not going to go into what extent yet until 
I'll get more positive information back on the examination. Sheriff Tom Borden, the WOC of the Columbus. I hear you say there have been no sightings of citizens, no calls from your agency. We, we have had some calls. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say a minor amount uh, going from last night after this started into the, uh, the, the AM hours. Uh, there, there were no confirmed sightings from law enforcement. Um, Licking County also had a couple reports. Uh, not sure the exact number, but as as far as to my knowledge at this point, no confirmed sightings from law enforcement. I've got time for about three more questions. Right. Yes, Brian Gatt. Uh, could you talk about how the cases were secured? I mean, was locked. What kind of cases they were outside the um, Brian, um, the different different styles, different sizes. Obviously, <clears throat> he had different animals. Obviously, he had multiple animals in some cages, single animals in others. Uh, this, if you think about a, a wire dog pen that you put your house pet in and then just blow it up about 25 times uh, the size or so, um, those are the types of cages that he had. Um, again, I haven't got to inspect everything up there this time, but from being up there in the past, um, just different style cages and different sizes. Were they padlocked? Were they... Up well, the, the gates, some of the gates were open. The, the gates were open, so I'm not sure what our deputies found when they first got up there, uh, whether we had stuff laying on the ground or if they were just latches um, or, or what was up there. What is his wife telling me? Um, I have not, I, I've talked to her personally about the existing animals that are still up there. I uh, haven't really got into an in-depth conversation with her about anything else. We've had uh, our office talk to her. Uh, she is on her way here, and uh, we're going to, as Jack said, hopefully speak with her a little bit about the existing animals. Okay. No, I'm not going to comment on that. It has nothing to do with this case right now with me, and uh, I, I'm not prepared to comment on that. No. Take one more question. I'll get you. Well, I, I would say um, I really can't answer that because I wasn't the one that shot them in relationship to where they were kept. We, I can tell you that we had four cats um, from the pens. We had four cats that were, and, and I'm going to use the analogy of football field so you can all understand my direction, but uh, I'm going to say at least uh, four to 500 yards, uh, which would be south of the pens that were headed uh, farther south. They were running. And, uh, and I also know that we had some other animals that we haven't recovered yet uh, that were down, shot from the direction of the interstate back towards the property. These are animals that we felt were trying to cross the property. As, as I said, we had one hit today. So uh, those animals would have been another probably 500 at least yards in a different direction from where they were kept in, in the pens. All right, one more question right here. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? There were possibly civilians picking up uh, one of the uh, um, I will confirm that. Um, we did have uh, some individuals try to steal one of the animals last night. Uh, we, it has been recovered. Um, they were taken into custody, uh, and we'll look to file charges against those people. I believe it was some type of cat. I don't know if it was a lion or a tiger. I want to know about it. Yeah, call me as soon as you know, because we want to know who did it. Plus, plus everybody, it's illegal to keep an endangered animal anyway, so to do that, you're going to be thrown in jail. I, I do want to add, i just been handed an update. I'll go ahead and do it now. Um, at this point, um, my captain, uh, Jeff Lecoque, at the top of the hill that's running the investigation, um, says we believe we're down to three animals that are unaccountable. Uh, one is a mountain lion, one is a bear, and one is a monkey. Um, now, I can tell you uh, that we are still searching the property to make sure the animals that we shot last night, because we had a lot of people here. 
Uh, we did have one of the monkeys that was killed by one of the lions. It was very obvious last night. Um, so, again, we are down to what we feel are, are three animals, um, uh, and, and that's going to be a preliminary number until we can really uh, sit down and, and confirm everything that we've got there. And, and obviously, uh, we want to tell our public, um, you know, the last animal we had, we found bedded down. As Jack said, the rain could be doing that. Um, the, the vets and the, the people he has with him have told us that sometimes these animals will let all the hoopla die down and come back to the only place they've known. Um, but we will be out actively searching for, for those animals. Anybody that sees any resemblance to those animals, please do not try to take any action yourself. We do not need, uh, I, I guess, if there is a good point to this whole situation, it's that we've had nobody hurt yet. Uh, and we've been very fortunate. Uh, can't say enough about our people that responded last night. Uh, they were put in a very, very volatile situation um, and maybe prevented uh, loss of life or injury by keeping those animals contained. So if you do see some of these animals, uh, please, please take caution, call us, get a good description, get a description of where the animal's at and possibly where it's headed for. Um, we're, we're, yes, it's, it's, they think it is a grizzly bear. Let, let me, oh, sure. You have a mountain lion, a grizzly bear, and a monkey. Now, the monkey, obviously, is last on the list. Um, living in Montana with grizzlies, uh, I think it's probably not a big grizzly. I don't know how big a grizzly is up there. Might be a young one. Again, you don't run from a grizzly. The grizzly really wouldn't be one of my most ultimate things. The mountain lion, this might be a different situation. Um, a mountain lion has great leaping ability. I don't know how old the mountain lion is. More than likely, it's captive mountain lion, but hopefully the sheriff, maybe today we can get this mountain lion, and then of course, if I had my redders, be the mountain lion first, then the grizzly, then the monkey can run around. Uh, but that's kind of my assessment of what, as far as these animals are left. That's, that's, to me, that's good news that that's the only three left. Um, uh, it's not good news that it's probably a mountain lion and grizzly, but again, uh, my main concern would be the mountain lion probably. Okay, again, I want to I thank everybody for being here. Uh, 